All right, well, we're here for Music on the Menu. It's our first show of 2019, and we have a great guest today. We have Billy Spanton of the Billy Spanton Band, uh, his fiance Michelle, who's also a member of the band, and of course, that guy who needs no introduction at all, Alan K. Stout, he's the radio host of Music on the Menu. Uh, Billy, I went onto your website, and I saw a question. I'm gonna open this up with the same exact question I saw on the website. What do you get when you take some classic rock add a touch of country and throw in a dash of blues. You get the Billy Spanton band. That's correct. Yes, you do. Oh, I passed so, the test. Yeah, right? that, I, I'm glad you know your website. That's I excellent. Gotta, now, I have a cheat sheet over very, here. Yeah, very good start we're off to here. So, you know, when, when I saw that, though, I kind of wondered, you know, kind of picking and pulling from a couple different spots. To, yeah. How exactly do you do that? Just, I love all kinds of music for the most part, so you draw from everything, you know, that you've ever listened to, and sometimes subconsciously you don't even realize uh, that you're drawing from it, you know? It's just in your DNA or in your brain somewhere, you know? And, and Alan, I wanted to ask you too, because from doing the show now, I've obviously co-hosted it a couple times. I think this is the first time that we've, we've had a guest anyway, or since I've been doing it, that we've, that, you know, pulled from so many different genres. Is this something that's rare on the local scene? Not as much as you might think. I think that people, especially musicians, are a lot more eclectic than maybe even the casual music fan. Uh, you know, good musicians uh, like like Billy, I think, open their, their minds and ears to a lot of different types of music, whether that all blends itself into their sound. That could vary from artist to artist, but I also have noticed that, uh, you know, interviewing young artists, I remember interviewing a, a, a rock guitarist in the maybe around 2000 and at the time he was 21 years old and his favorite guitar player was Jimmy Page you know who I mean Led Zeppelin had disbanded 20 years before and so I think the people that are really into music particularly musicians have much broader horizons than, than you might expect. Okay and now Bill I want to swing back over to you too going along the lines of these different types of genres who exactly then are your musical uh, influences, um, being that there's that you play, you know, from so many different types of uh, genres. There, uh, the Rolling Stones for number one is definitely my favorite band of all time, and even the Stones themselves have such a diverse catalog of music. You know, they kind of touch base with blues and country and rock and all different things. So that's probably where I got a lot of that from. Um, I love Bad Company, um, particularly. Paul Rogers voice who's the singer of that band and um, he also sang with a band called Free which was very big in the UK um, all right now everybody knows that song mm -hmm. over here but over there they were they were huge and um, I love ACDC I love Angus Young's guitar playing I love okay. Leonard Skinner that's where I probably get my southern rock from oh, so nice. yeah there's, uh, and I can go on <laughs> but yeah. we don't have time <laughs> And Bad Company, too, when we did the radio uh, version, you kind of told a cool story where you got to uh, have a nice little interaction with, uh, was it their drummer, was it? Yeah, drummer Simon Kirk is his name, yeah. yeah so uh, kind of explain that story. He played a song with you, is that it? Yeah, he played a number of songs with me. Um, on my first record, Long, Long Road, the title track, he played on a song called Appetite for Love, and he played on a song called Little Thing They Call the Blues. Um, I also had the opportunity to open for Bad Company back in 2000. 13 on their 40th anniversary tour, which was very cool. Wow, that's very awesome. Cool. Well, let's talk about another influence, which would be your fiance. Here yes. you just recently got engaged. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. So, when we did the radio version uh, before we came on set here, Billy, you told the story of how you guys met, but you kept saying Mich that Michelle tells it so much oh, better. So, much. Michelle, <laughs> you're, you're on the hot seat now. You tell the story this All time. Right. I like this. <laughs> Um, I was hosting, along with our friend Sammy, um, an open mic, and um, Billy had come in, and I thought he had never sung before because he seemed very nervous. And I tried to assure him that we're all just listening, you know, and trying to be heard. And I went up and did my little song and came back, and he went up and, again, thinking he'd never sung before, I said, you'll be good, you'll be, you'll be fine, relax. And when he was introduced, they had said um, that he had a CD out and he was going to play his first track off of it. So I wasn't too much of a fan for a couple of minutes <laughs> afterwards <laughs> because I kind of felt silly, but um, he was great and we've been friends ever since. And, and then it just, uh, as he said, the stars aligned and we wound up singing together and now we are 
making music of our own and so that story was actually a lot better with you telling it. You should, you should have did it in the radio yeah, version. I, I, I told Billy, him I mean, I'm not saying that your storytelling is bad, but I mean, that, that was a hell of a lot better than what you said. <laughs> I said oh, I left a lot out. Yeah, no, 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 no. She did, yeah. She is this censored? No, I'm just <laughs> No, I couldn't agree more. I love how she tells that story. <laughs> All right, let's get back into the music just a little bit here. I, I went on your Facebook page. I was looking around. There was a, a song title that really caught my eye. Uh, Little Miss Sweet seduction. Did I, did I read that correctly? That's, that? Yes. Yeah, that a lot going on in that title there. So kind of tell me what's going on with that um, one. Well, uh, the song is, uh, most people think that that song is about um, a woman, which it could be. Um, but it's really about temptation in general, if you listen to the lyrical right. content of it. So I think everybody, um, anyone alive has been tempted by one thing or another or have certain demons that they may deal with um, at one point or another in time and that's what it's really about is um, you know all those types of um, temptations that we may encounter okay. as uh, we live. Now you have two albums out right? Well, yes. Is that on the first <coughs> album or the, the second That's on the second album. The second Pride, album, yes. okay. So uh, tell me then about that second album. What's kind of um, you know the the basis of it and some of the songs that, um, that are on it. Well, the okay. Well, the the, the basis of it, the, there's a lot of uh, classic rock, like hard rock songs on it, and then there's a couple, there's at least one or two ballads on there. So I guess you could say it's all different parts of me that come out at one point or another. It's and actually, it's it's some of those songs. It's a collection of songs, I'd say, um, that go back some. 17, 18 years. Oh, wow. In fact, there's one song I have called Yesterday's Glass, which leads the album out. And uh, that song has bagpipes on it. And um, Kearney, New Jersey, where I'm from, is a very Irish, Scottish town where I grew up. And, and a lot of my buddies are bagpipe players. And, um, you know, we had little fish and chip shops. And it was a very cool place to grow up. Anyway, that was buzzing around in my head for 20 years. And um, finally got the opportunity to hear it. <coughs> played and recorded what I envisioned it was like such a cool thing yeah you know oh, nice sweet well Alan I want to get your take too because you've obviously you heard the album and you said that you've been playing Billy stuff for a while now so uh, kind of give us your take on the album too, being the uh, local musical expert here you know I was all when we first started playing Billy's stuff on the show probably about five years ago um, you know I was taken by the songwriting and the musicianship and that that eclecticness that you know we talked about just a few minutes ago with the a lot of different influences coming in you know you can hear it you can hear a little bit of that that Leonard Skinner kick once in a while and that Rolling Stones sort of uh, roadhouse vibe too once in a while and so to hear all that coming through you know I obviously I was aware that we had a, a really talented artist uh, on our hands and once we relaunched the music series here which I used to do at the Woodlands years ago at, at, at Mohegan Sun and we start, you know, getting more music from Billy. He was obviously somebody that we wanted to invite up to play, which, which you know, you're going to see some clips of a little bit later in the show. And exactly, I was just going to say that same exact thing. Guys, don't go anywhere because coming up after this break, we're going to hear more from the band and then you're going to get a chance to hear all of the music coming up in just a little bit. We're back here for Music on the Menu. Right now we're inside of 105 The River here at Mohegan Sun Pocono. And we're gonna talk more with the Billy Spatton Band. Uh, Billy, obviously we heard the last block a lot about you and a lot about your fiance here, but there's a third member in the band who's not here. He's, obviously we're gonna see him in a little bit when he's yes. performing on stage. Why don't you talk about, um, about him a little bit? Oh, great. Um, his name is Glenn Skander. Um, he's a great friend of both of ours um, and he plays with the band and we do some side gigs with him and he owns a store called Players Row Music down in Hawley. It's a great music store and um, he actually has his own album out um, under the name Burden of, on Society. Uh, the name of the album is Fires in the Driveway but he's a great musician, great guitarist, great singer. I mean I don't know what else I can say about him. I love him. Yeah. How about you, Michelle? Give Great take friend. On him. Great friend. So now let's go into uh, writing a little bit, because obviously we, we, we've spoke kind of about your genres, we spoke about a little bit of the music, but actual songwriting, um, kind of, what kind of influences you when you're writing your songs? Influences me? Um, mostly uh, things you just encounter in life, um, life experiences, if you will, 
good or bad or indifferent. Um, they all play into it, you know, those types of things for the most part, things I've experienced. And occasionally you may see something that um, sparks an idea for a song. You pick up a magazine, you see something, oh, that's cool, or a cool topic, or you see something on TV, things like that. But mostly life experiences. So, Alan, I should want to get your take on something with writing songs, too, being, um, you know, you're just all the people that you've covered, whether locally or, or famously throughout the years. Whenever we see a group, obviously in this case, Billy handles the writing, but there's times where you see groups where kind of everybody kind of plays a turn and, you know, writing songs. So when that happens, is there mostly turmoil at the end where it comes to that of like who should, you know what I mean, get the, I guess, the, the perks of writing the song? Not until they get signed and they start seeing the money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, when, when, I think when bands start off, they're a gang and they're friends and we're going to make it. And then, and, then, and then if they don't get signed and they stay in the clubs and the bars, they could stay that way for a long time. But uh, sometimes if they get a record deal and there's publishing and, and, and things like that, then they'll see one member of the group making considerably more money because of the, the songwriting credits and the residuals that come in through radio airplay and, and album sales. And so I've heard some stories of uh, a band that uh, maybe there was a couple of members that uh, had no interest in writing songs as they were riding their way up to uh, so, so national success, and then all of a sudden everybody's running up and down the hallway of the hotel with notebooks in their hands, <laughs> trying to get some songs on that next record. You know, I say, didn't, didn't the Doors have a bit of a problem back in the in the '60s with that? Where um, I forget the song, but didn't somebody write one of the one of their big songs? Because Jim Morrison wrote the the majority of them, didn't he? He wrote the lyrics, I think. But I think that they I think they collaborated a lot with with the musical uh, side of okay. things. I mean, if you saw the new Freddie Mercury movie, which I know a lot of people did, they it, they came to a head over it at one point where when they almost disbanded at one point, they never did disband. I guess they made a decision that all the songs would just have written by Queen. And that way, uh, if, if, if records start selling or, or songs start getting airplay, they didn't have to worry about that internally anymore. And there were no squabbles over, over things like that. And then you weren't trying to position as hard to get your song on the record, even though you knew that maybe it wasn't as good as some of the other songs because you knew you were going to get paid anyway. Okay. I mean, the business side comes into it a little bit later. Yeah. Would you agree though, Billy, that when you yeah. start off, it's oh yeah, it's, it's all for one. You're, you're, the, you're a gang. The gang-like mentality. <laughs> you know? yeah, running with the pack. Yeah. yeah, and then maybe a little bit later is when some of the other stuff could yeah. creep in, potentially. Yeah, and yeah, it seems like it does sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, when Sting left the police and he put out Dream of the Blue Turtles, and I listened to it the first time, I thought, well, that, that would have just been the next police record anyway. You know, so he kind of proved his point. Okay. Now, I want to talk about uh, some backup singing now, because, Michelle, you're doing the backup lyrics, obviously, in the band. Yes. Kind of, is that something that's kind of hard to do, is to, to kind of pr produce very good backup lyrics? Or kind of how do you guys go about, like, figuring that out, I guess? Um, well, Michelle and I sing, like I said earlier, we have a, um, an act called Magnetic Attraction, so that's pretty much based, uh, our niche in, in that particular act is harmony. Mm -hmm. Almost, the I would say the majority of what we do is, is harmony based. Um, but even with the band here, Michelle, she does sing backups, but she also sings lead on some key parts of songs, okay. a number of songs that she'll be singing some lead parts on as well. Okay. So, now, Michelle, do you have anything, like when he's writing music, do you have a say in kind of anything, like maybe I should come in here or, or anything like that? Absolutely. Or the, or in the music that we're doing together, okay. absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, okay. we're a team. Yeah. Definitely a team. Yeah. Excellent. Now, where do we find um, your guys' stuff at? iTunes? At the um, home? Yeah, iTunes. For, well, if, if you went to BillySpanton.com, uh, that's, I'm sorry, BillySpantonBand.com, right on our homepage, you would see um, a link right to iTunes, also another one to CD Baby, where both albums are available. Um, and other than that, we have our Facebook page, uh, Billy Spanton Band, as well. And we have the Magnetic Attraction Facebook page as well. So through all those various um, uh, places, you can find the CD. Okay. And then on Facebook, you guys post events too. So somebody's like, oh, hey, you know, I, yes. I like what we're hearing here. Yes. You yes. know, okay, yeah, excellent. We, that's really where we publicize a lot of what we're doing because everybody's on Facebook today and you know it's an easy way to get the word out there. All right well luckily that for everyone that's going to be watching the show here you're not gonna have to travel anywhere to go see them play because you're gonna be seeing them on your TV screen coming up right after this break. Please give a warm welcome 
to the Billy Spanton Band. Thank you, and thank you, Alan. told me a long time ago people get what they deserve I come to find as I grow up to me no cup grow up cause that's the way it is the way it is nothing you can do to change it that's the way it is the way it is not as well just face it They say what comes around goes around the times that may be true Cause it's a lot of give and a little take Sometimes the joke's on you Cause that's the way it is, the way it is Nothing you can do to change it That's the way it is, the way it is you Might as well just face it what comes around goes around Times that may be true Cause it's a lot of give and a little take Sometimes the joke's on you Yeah, yeah, yeah Thank you very much. Happy to be here tonight at Breakers and going out over the air to all you people listening on the radio and at home or in your cars. And we're going to be playing uh, a bunch of songs from uh, two albums that uh, we have out, one Long Long Road and the other recent album Matter of Pride. Here's a song from the recent album, it's a cut called Lovin' on the Run. Waiting for the morning sun Cause I love you I can't wait till I get home Yeah Cause in the meantime, baby 
further ado, this song is called Matter of Pride. Try to leave me at the station Try to feed me all your life Never seen it coming I could not believe my eyes You're a cold-hearted woman Devil in disguise Put the bottle down this morning Put the pistol down last night that cheetah woman sure don't treat me right There's a south wind blowing Soon I'll be out of sight Oh yeah Cause the train I ride It leaves tonight It's trucking on down the line Leave it all behind And start a new line Ooh, it's a matter of pride Just a matter of pride Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Try to bluff me at the table Gone and tell me your best hand, yeah Odds were against me when I took that losing hand Got the money in my tongue Line drawn in the sand Got the same old blues this morning Got the same old boots today I can't find a reason why I'll now make me stay Cause the train, it's a come Tomorrow I'll be on my way Ooh, yeah 
Cause the train I ride, it leaves tonight It's trucking on down the line Leave it all behind and start a new life Ooh, it's a matter of pride Cause the train I ride, it leaves tonight It's trucking on down the line Leave it all behind and start a new line